So good morning. Here we have the Cricut website. We're going to go through and we're going to rebuild this bad boy um, using Cursor. So I've never used React before. I'm a Vue developer, but we're going to go ahead and follow these uh, React instructions to create a new Next.js app. We're going to call it Cricut Rebuild, and then we're just going to go ahead and select all the default options. So Cursor has Cursor Composer, which is this really cool new feature using I'm an LLM in the background to generate and modify code files for you, and we're going to use it to rebuild this app really quickly today. It's just really cool, and i got to show you how cool it is to, to use it and how to work with it. So we're going to CD into the folder, and we're going to open it in Cursor. So here we go. This is the main application that you see when you see Cursor. So let's get it up and running in the browser and the application so we can see our progress as we go along. <sighs> Okay, cool, so we've got it running on localhost. Let's go back to Cursor, and now let's, let's have a look at the files. So yeah, we've got our normal uh, TypeScript files in that. So we can either add them to this thing called Cursor Composer from here by clicking Add File to Composer, or you can click uh, Control shift i on your keyboard to open the Cursor Composer. Um, so I've just added it here to Cursor Composer. I've got a text prompt already um, prepared here that I'm gonna paste into the website here. And okay, um, this is, we want to completely rebuild the Cricut website, we want to use this ticketing, we want to use these styles, we want to do these things, and we want to use the existing folder structure um, to, to do that. Um, because we don't want it to create anything else, we want it to use a folder structure that's already there. We want it to have a home page with several pieces of info, we want styling, we want a few mock events. And so yeah, you click this enter in Composer, and um, Cursor Composer starts generating all the steps and all of the um, text uh, and all of the code that's necessary to create that thing that we just described and that we want to make happen. And so you can see here, it's updated the app slash page.tsx file, it's created a new file, it's generating the code for that, and this is all happening in the background just from that initial prompt that we made. And so you can see here, like what we did at the bottom, we referenced page.tsx, and um, while it goes and creates this, um, we can talk about the, the different file, different um, new tools in that that AI has allowed to for code generation. There's GitHub Copilot, there's Cursor, the cell. So then when the file finishes, we just click accept there. Okay, we've got an error. So these tools get about 70% of the way through. So we're just going to literally go paste that error, and we're going to paste it in here and figure out what the error is. Um, right, please don't use a library. Yeah, okay, so we're using a library. I wanted to just use plain Tailwind and plain... Um, TSX, and I don't want to use any images in that, I just want to use the emojis as pictures. And we also want to have some more detail on the pages, we want some more of the styling, some more of the mock data, um, so let's get it to do that. And so while it's generating, yeah, Vercel also has their new V0 tool for creating um, AI, um, not creating AI applications, but using AI to build applications out. Um, and even deploy them and handle a whole lot of the DevOps side of things, whereas we're going to do that all now. We're just generating the code here on our local machines using um, Cursor and using Claude Sonnet 3.5. But yeah, there's a lot of amazing tools, and this one has been out for a couple of weeks now, and it's, I think it's changing the way that people essentially build prototypes for applications, but also get through repetitive stuff, like this creating a whole lot of divs, creating pages, creating um, the basic connections. Okay, it's done. Let's see is uh, annoying. Okay, great. So we've got our ultimate ticketing platform, our Ticketmaster clone. It's got the, the pages here that when we click on, it should open. Okay, we've got another error. Um, can't resolve date. I think that's a library issue, but let's just paste that whole error in straight into Cursor. Um, because I actually haven't used React before, so I actually don't really know how to use it that well. I'm a Vue developer. So let's paste in that error there and literally just ask it to fix it for us. Um, and let's also add more data, more styling, because it's not quite where I want it to be yet. I want it to look a bit more nice. I want it to have some animations, some gradients. So let, let's get that inserted in here while it fixes that other bug. Um, combining instructions like this is obviously a way to save on the amount of generations you use in that to achieve um, the same thing. But yeah, you can see here we've got 3.5 Sonnet selected as our model, depending on how many um, generations you use and what uh, tier of cursor you're on, you can use different models and you get different um, different output basically. But Sonnet 3.5 is definitely the best at the moment for code generation. So here we can see it's generating all our code again, it's adding those animations, it's fixing the date FNS error dependency, and yeah, um, 
it's really nice and yeah i've just been using cursor composer a lot for generating starting new projects for getting up to speed for getting running and uh, it's just a great tool um, in your software development arsenal for moving faster and for doing cool things without the same drudgery that creating all of these divs these classes adding all of this tailwind might have um, entailed before so let's look come on should nearly be done how many minutes in are we? Okay, just a few more and then we'll be done. So you can see here on the left hand side as well, it's busy completing the different files um, as it modifies them and as it adds more code, fixes them, references other directories, references other folders. And this is obviously the advantage of doing it inside the IDE here, inside Cursor, as opposed to just doing it inside of ChatGPT or Claude, where you have to then copy and paste the code. You have to go and change multiple files. Um, if you change a reference in one, okay, it's done. So let's go and accept this. Let's open up our browser again. What? That is completely wrong. Okay, something something disastrous has happened here. Let's go to the home page. Yeah, I know something is messed up here. Um, let's let's take a screenshot here. Yeah, what happened to all the styling? Um, let's add a screenshot here, and then we're going to go and drop that screenshot straight into cursor here and get it to fix it. So let me take a screenshot. Drop it in here. Come on. Okay, cool. So we can send images straight in as well, which is great because now it gives the model context as to what the problem is. Like, why is this not working? No, you see, see, like an LLM does, it's hallucinating a little bit. We already have Tailwind installed. We installed it when we installed the project, but there it seems to have generated us a solution. Probably just, probably just the import error somewhere. Let's refresh. much better so this is great now this is just a few minutes in we've got animations we've got emojis we've got our ticketing a home page let's go and click on an event this tech innovation summit great this is the date location let's add in a couple of tickets let's buy the tickets okay let's put in a, a fake card number an expiration date cvv and complete our purchase. Okay, so we should change the styling to go back to the other page, but you can see here, great, we've got like a working MVP prototype of a ticketing platform in just a few minutes using this Cursor Composer where it generates the code for us in multiple different files um, and then stores it on our local machine. Um, yeah, and so this is really great. We've done it in just a few minutes, super happy with the result. And yeah, here's our ultimate ticketing platform clone in just a few minutes. And so yeah, this is the Cursor website. This is where you can go and you can download it. It's a fork of VS Code, but it's got all these great AI features built in. Um, it's my tool of choice at the moment for AI software development. And yeah, that was a very quick tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, here's all our code. Uh, also, there's another feature where you can just click tab, 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 and it generates more features um, that it thinks you might need. But yeah, that's it.